Hello, everybody. Welcome to our liturgy for Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. You'll notice us trying to keep a very uh, a good social distancing uh, around one another, and we're very happy that you're here to join us. And you can find us, I know you've already found us, or you'd be talking, you wouldn't be listening to me right now, but you can find us on YouTube and also on Facebook. Just very, very quickly, I'd like to go through a couple of things that are happening this week. Our schedule for this week is up on our website right now as I'm speaking to all of you, so you can keep your eye on that. But on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we have our Liturgy of the Word for Holy uh, Monday, Holy Tuesday, and Holy Wednesday. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday mornings, we're going to be having the Liturgy of the Hours, morning prayer, live, here in the church uh, for those three events in the morning. But let me talk to you really quickly about uh, what we're going to be doing here today. Uh, welcome to our celebration of Palm Sunday, or as some call it, Passion Sunday, but the official title for today is Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. And we'll begin in the, in the, uh, with the commemoration of the Lord's entrance into Jerusalem, if you want to grab your Bibles and follow along, or you can use a Magnificat if you have that, or give us this day or a word among us. But the scripture text is Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. So maybe you want to pause right now and go grab your Bible so you can follow along with the liturgy with us. Uh, for Mass, the first reading is Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 through 7. One of these suffering servant songs which we're going to be talking about a lot on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. The second reading is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 11. And then finally, the gospel is the passion according to Matthew, which begins in Matthew 26, verse 14, and you're the crowd. So as you are there at home following along, you know, be, you're welcome to join us and become part, if you can, of our reading of the passion according to Matthew. Also, too, I wanted to share with you, uh, and here are three pages here, of all your prayer petitions that you have sent in to us. These prayer petitions will go uh, on the altar for the rest of the week, and whenever we have adoration on Holy Thursday evening together, these petitions will go on that altar over there as we pray together uh, after the liturgy of the Lord's Supper. So God bless you. We're about to get started in just a few moments. Thank you very much for joining us. We're glad to have you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of the Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, beginning in his, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. And let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus and the disciples drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them here to me. And if anyone should say anything to you, reply, the master has need of them. 
Then he will send them off at once. This happened so that what was spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to daughter Zion, Behold, your king comes to you, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foil of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the ass and the colt and laid their cloaks over them, and he sat on them. The very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and strewn them on the road. The crowds preceded him, and those following kept crying out and saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, Who is this? The crowds replied, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. So, dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth now in peace. Hosanna, 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 save us all. Hosanna, 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 save us all, save us all. Hosanna, 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 save us all. Hosanna, 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 save us all, save us all. And let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient sufferings and so merit a share in his resurrection. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see at me. They mock me with parted lips, they wag their heads. He relied on the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, Abandoned me. 
Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, be not far from me. O oh, my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him. All you descendants of Israel, my God. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, 
What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the feast of the unleavened bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says my appointed time draws near. In the house I shall celebrate, in your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at the table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples, he said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which shall be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on, I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken. For it is written, I shall strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit down while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass away from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you would not keep watch with me for an hour. Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived accompanied by a large crowd, with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, 
For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think I cannot call upon my father and he will not provide me at this moment with more than 12 legions of angels? But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled which say it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too but he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that, he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money, but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consolation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why the field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and he questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accursed by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast of the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, 
Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but, try, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but after he had Jesus scourged, and he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown of thorns, they placed it on his head, and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself, if you are the Son of God, and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. So he is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? Which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine, and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. Could you please kneel? Would you please stand? And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and men with them who were keeping watch over Jesus, feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly this was the Son of God. There were many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. 
Along them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in a new tomb that he had honed the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance of the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter, while he's still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders, then, that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last imposture would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, the guard is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. I'd like to share a story with you that is not a coronavirus story, but one day it could be. It's a story that's told by a nurse who worked at Stanford University Hospital some years ago. And apparently there was a little girl, her name was Liz, who was suffering from a very serious and a very rare disease. And it seemed that the only hope she had of recovery was getting a blood transfusion from her brother, who had the exact same rare disease, but somehow miraculously he had recovered from it. And so his blood would give her the antibodies that would help, him to, her, help her to be able to combat the disease. And so the doctor sat the little boy down, explains everything to him, and says, would he be willing to give his blood for his sister? He kind of puzzled about that for a moment, and then he said, yes. For Liz, I'll be happy to do it. And as he lay in the bed beside his sister for the blood transfusion, he himself, along with his parents, smiled as he was able to see the color in the life come back to her, his sister's faith face once again. Then all of a sudden his smile faded and he began to become very, very pale. And he looked up and he said to the doctor with his trembling voice, do I begin to die now or will it take time for that to happen? You see, the little boy thought he was giving all his blood to his sister. He thought he was going to be giving his life for his sister. And I share a little story with you as we begin Holy Week to try to grasp a hold of in some small way this remarkable love, this passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ that you and I are going to be celebrating during this Holy Week. And I want to share that it, this is in three different ways you and I can begin to grasp the mystery of this love, this God's love for us. And number one, it's an invitation. Jesus said over and over again, there is no greater love than this, to lay down your life for your friends. It seemed like the little boy was willing to lay down his life for his sister. It's also a great sign, a great sign of God's love, a love that says, love one another as I have loved you. Remember, as I have loved you. And that little boy was willing to love his sister in such a remarkable kind of a way. And thirdly, it's a revelation about this love, about a love that includes suffering. Jesus says to us over and over and over again, uh, pick up your cross every day and follow me. Here's a quote that I just read this week as I was pondering the mysteries we're going to be celebrating here. You know, if we took away all suffering from the world, this world that we live in, there would be no more love. If we took away suffering, there would be no love. Isn't that a remarkable thing to be pondering in this Holy Week as we ponder the passion and death of Jesus? So here we are. We're about to begin this holiest of weeks, and let me most especially talk to you about Holy Thursday, 
Good Friday, Easter Vigil Night, Easter Sunday, and these, 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 these phenomenally important events we're about to ponder and to celebrate. The most important event in all of human history. Here I have uh, Fleming Rutledge's book called The Crucifixion, which she said took her 25 years to write this. And she even whenever she was finished writing it, she said, you know, it, it, it doesn't even begin to talk about how deep and how profound this mystery is for us. And in the one chapter she writes, uh, the, the chapter titled The Primacy of the Cross, it is in the crucifixion that the nature of God is truly revealed. In the crucifixion, the nature of God is truly revealed. Since the resurrection is God's mighty trans-historical yes to the historical crucified Christ, we can assert, we can assert that the crucifixion is the most important historical event that ever happened. And that resurrection it was brought by that historical event whether we believe it or not, is happening in this day. Even with our world as sick as it is, it's happening in this day. And maybe you and I need to begin to prove to the world and maybe even prove to ourselves that all of this really, really matters for us. And you know, every year, at this point, I'm always saying, you know, slow it down, don't be so busy, make sure you take some time to really begin to ponder all of this. And probably for many of us, I don't have to say that so much this year, because maybe we have plenty of time on our hands, many of us, to be able to ponder all of this. But as I say every single year, and I'll say it this year as well, this needs to be our top priority, probably now for the rest of our lives, but especially for this week, the top priority of our lives. Let's not give God our leftovers. Let's make all of this the very center of our lives. And the next thing I want to say to you, as I always say to you, is let's be present in all of this. You know, many of us do have the time. Let's allow ourselves to sink deep, not to simply stay, you know, the shallow end of the pool anymore, but really launch out of the deep, to ponder something as deeply as this. You know, that somebody that ponders the mystery of all this for 25 years to write such a volume as this. Let's go deep this year, because now I think you may be opportunity to do that. And the last thing I want to say to you as we continue with this sacred liturgy is let's do it together. I know that you and I can't meet in this beautiful church here each and every day as we long to do for Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Vigil, and Easter Sunday, most especially. We can't do that. There's no public mass, but the church is not closed. The church is open for business. And we are here open for business. So I beg you, I implore you, I challenge you, join us each and every time. Make this the very center of your week. Make this to be the holiest week ever as you and I ponder this extravagant, furious, outrageous, remarkable love of Jesus Christ. And all throughout Lent, we have been reading the Apostles' Creed because of the biblical implications, excuse me, the, the baptismal implications of that. When you and I renew our baptismal promises on Easter, this, the Apostles' Creed is the great vow that you and I make. So let's, together, once again, profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Heavenly Father, we have much to pray about. Let's hear. We beg you to hear these petitions. 
Our response is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our church, that in this time of social distancing, we will continue to remember that we are still community, the family of God, we pray. Lord, Lord in, your mercy, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That through the celebration of the suffering and death of Jesus Christ, our church will be strengthened and give us the courage to continue to grow in these uncertain times, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That our civil leaders use their power and judgment to keep us safe through this pandemic, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That Christians throughout the world unite this week through available technology in prayer, adoration, self-giving, and devotion, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those on the front lines in caring and treating those with the coronavirus. Give them strength, courage, and comfort through this uncertain time, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those trapped in doubt, fear, or depression, that they may find comfort in God's loving embrace, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That those suffering with the coronavirus or any illness may find comfort in God's love, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for grace this week to face the trials and difficulties of life with confidence and certainty that God will be by our side assisting us, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who have died from the coronavirus, that they might, may find everlasting peace in the consolation of the Lord, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pause now to add our own intentions in the silence of our hearts. And for all the souls of the faithfully departed of St. Michael's, our Mother of Sorrows, and especially for the, Com the Carmela Conway, Linda Grell, Mark Blaisdell, and David Ed, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for all the different petitions that people have sent us that are upon our altar right now, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord in, in your, your mercy, mercy hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we struggle in difficult times. We know your presence here. We know that this redemption brought about by the passion and death of your Son is still made present here and is transforming our broken, sick world at this very moment. Bless us as we continue our journey of faith, as we enter more deeply into this great Paschal mystery for us. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, 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 sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you Crucified my Lord Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, 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 oh sometimes it comes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you Sometimes it causes 
causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is true, right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty, his death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we now acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name. Holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings, pour out upon them the power of your Holy Spirit, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we too have become your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As they with them, he took bread, gave the blessing. He said that broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, in a similar way when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed upon the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more he gave you thanks. Then he gave the chalice to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection of the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles you to the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those who unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as we partake of the one bread and the one chalice, we may be gathered to one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, Mark, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom till the hour we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. And free at last from the wounds of corruption, and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Rule him with him in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. We have begun our celebration of Holy Week. Together now, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, let you and I now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, where the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. And let's offer each other now a sign of Christ's peace. Peace with you. Peace, Michael. Peace be with you. Peace with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Miserere no Miserere nobis, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Miserere nobis, Miserere nobis, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Dona nobis pacem. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. the one who died upon the cross for us long ago, the sacrifice that occurred long ago is made present here. So behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Thank you very much for joining us for our liturgy of Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. So let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so also by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So thank you very much for joining us for our liturgy for Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. God bless you. The Lord be with you. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate, did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let's go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Journey on, leaving our old ways behind. Journey on, serving those we walk beside. Pressing onward toward the goal, we journey on. Journey on to the cross where Christ has died. Journey on to his resurrection life. Journey on, leaving our own ways behind. Journey on, serving those we walk beside. Pressing onward toward the goal, we journey on. Journey on to the cross. Where Christ has died, journey on to his resurrection life, putting on his love like clothes, we journey on.